folks. I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. Boy, talking about seeing signs in heaven. Yeah. Um, we had another X flare. And this here, you might be wondering what it is. It's a comet. Comet Tukuchin Atlas. Or it's also called C slash 2023A3. This comet is going to make a close approach to Earth. And it was only discovered um, last year. Uh, more about that in a minute. Here on Soho Movie Theater, yeah, there was two um, solar flares, corona mass ejections off the sun, back to back. And there goes one, two, actually it looks like three, don't it? Let me play it through again. One, two, three. There's been two days of auroras. Um, yeah, and we'll probably end up with some more because it looks like we might get a glancing blow from this latest X-Class solar flare. It was an X2.1 and then there was two M-Class flares it looks like. Um, an M1.2. Oh, that one's a C. And then this one, an M1.5. There was also right before that an M1.4. Here we have the solar wind predi um, prediction. Let me bring this down because here at the bottom is the latest um, solar flare right there. And I'll play it. And that little green dot, um, that is the Earth. And it looks like it's going to be a glancing blow to our planet. Let me pause that. So I paused it so I can bring this up to show the date when it's going to probably impact the Earth which will be on the 12th and I'll have to bring it down to play some more okay there we go let me pause it again all right so it's going to go all the way through and you can see the different um, effects from past solar flares yeah starting um, yesterday from the 7th not much going on and then bam yep they got that one Yep, and that's the one that was released today that's going to be impacting us um, later, uh, maybe tomorrow and the day after. Here's the notification that was sent out from spaceweather.gov. They're saying that radio blackouts reaching the R3 level were observed over the past 24 hours. It only takes about eight minutes to have a radio blackout from a corona mass ejection. Um, a solar flare off the sun. There is still a chance of isolated R3 strong or greater radio blackout events through October 10th. Yeah, so we're going to have computer problems, GPS problems, yeah, the alarms for fluctuation um, for the power. Yeah, that's going to continue. I wish I could make this bigger for you, but here is that comment. And you can see the solar flares going off at the same time. One, two, three. As the uh, comet um, swings through our part of the universe. And we're not going to see it again for another 80,000 years. Comet Tukushin Atlas, or C2023A3, um, are expecting this to be especially vivid possibly rivaling the brightness of Jupiter, Jupiter in the night sky. The comet is expected to be at its brightness, brightest on Wednesday, sorry I'm all tongue-tied, and potentially visible through the end of the month. Wouldn't that be great? Um, it will become visible in the evening sky starting on October 14th, if you're not an early riser. If you are an early riser, um... It's right now at a magnitude 2.2 in the morning. So what they're saying, um, we are going to have a full moon. It will be full October 17th, right in the middle of the best views, viewing period for Tukushin Atlas. And after that date, um, it's going to rise later each evening, making viewing the comet much easier. Um, the comet never climbs high in the sky, but on October 15th, it will be 16 degrees high in the west, 
one hour after sunset. And on the 18th, the night after the full moon, it will uh, be, probably be a little bit easier to see. About 25 degrees above the horizon. The comet was first detected by astronomers at the Tukasan Observatory, also known as Purple Mountain Observatory in China, on January 9th of last year. A month later, the comet was independently spotted by observers using the asteroid terrestrial impact um, last alert system. I've talked about that. What a name, last alert system or um, the Atlas Telescope in South Africa. So that's why it's got two different names. Um, yeah, I came up with Tukasan Atlas name because of that. Uh, the comet comes from the Oort Cloud, um, an area filled with frozen debris on the outer edges of our solar system. So it could be a, um, made up of rock and ice and things like that. But they often say that about comets. And yeah, sometimes, yeah, they're um, a lot more dangerous than what they led on. Initially, observers suggested that the comet may orbit the sun only once every 80,000 years. So if that is the case, yeah, this is going to be the only time that you're going to be able to view it. Tuck and Chan Atlas will make its closest approach to Earth on October 12th with a distance of 44 million miles. But the comet is expected to brighten on the evening of October 9th tomorrow because it will be just in the right position for a dusty debris to scatter the light from the sun directly to towards viewers on Earth, temporarily boosting the comet's brilliance. Wouldn't that be something if it does become as bright as Jupiter? And you should be able to see it with um, binoculars, evidently. So just before um, or just after sunset or just um, before sunrise is the best viewing time, evidently. But that's pretty cool. Yep, signs in heaven and on earth. A lot of people believe that we are entering the end times. Yeah, just wait until the three woes start. I hope not, boy. Um, but we're always given a chance to repent and yeah, turn to God. Um, but anyways, um, that's all I have for you right now. What are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.